One of the most frustrating things we have to do in e-discovery is redo productions. Not only we have to redo them multiple times, but we rarely know a good reason why we're even redoing them. Sometimes we have to redo them multiple times because redactions have changed, documents have been added or removed, uh, sort order has changed or something like that has happened. And today, what I wanna talk about is a way that we can redo productions that could make it easier for everybody. And I had this happen to me in another company I worked for, but for some reason, I don't see anyone redoing productions this way. So today, let's talk about that. There are two distinct stages of production when change to specifications can occur before the production was turned over to the other side or after. Now, if it happens before, you know, you may get requests from a client saying, produce this, you start working on it, you're endorsing documents, and in the middle of it, they go, oh, wait, 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 pull this document. And you're like, oh, damn it, all right, let's start over. And then you do it again, and then they say, oh, we need to change the redaction, okay, start over, all right? And we can go through a number of iterations, and it is very frustrating, but ultimately, it's not that big of a deal as long as you haven't produced your data yet. So you go through multiple iterations and then finally you arrive at something that you're comfortable is happy with and then that data gets sent over to the other side. The situation I wanna address in this video is when this change happens after the documents were given to somebody else. So the client has approved the production, everything is good, data goes to another party and then either they complain that there is a problem or the client goes, oh, no, 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 I just found something. We have to do clawback. We have to do this. We have to do that. We got to make change to production that's already been shared with someone else. Someone could have loaded into their review system and could have already started tagging and identifying documents. So what problems are we facing when we handed off production to someone else and now we have to redo it? Well, one of the things clients ask for is to re-image documents. They say, oh, this uh, document wasn't tiffed properly, things got cut off, something happened, you know, the body of a message had white tables and something happened, or maybe they needed to tiff out specific excels and they didn't like how that come out. Well, if you retiff it, it can create more pages than what the original document had. And so what you'll be asked is to suffix any additional pages, because we want to keep the numbering same as it was before. The other problem could be the other way around. Somebody produced tiffed out document and now they say, oh, we just want to produce a placeholder. We want to replace, you know, 50 pages with one page, but we don't want to have all these gaps in numbering. That's going to look terrible. So let's create uh, blank pages for every page that's not there. And we're going to say intentionally left blank. So everything looks pretty to them. And both of those situations are very, very frustrating to deal with. These are usually two most common problems to deal with, but things get crazier. You know, when clients say, oh, well, for the reproduction version of this, let's add a suffix dash R or prefix, or they come up with all kinds of crazy ideas how they can sort of patch a production that in their eyes would look okay to them. Everyone's got different opinion of what is okay to produce and they try to come up with their own complex way how they can make production okay in a way. And over the years, myself and my team had to do like what feels like a million of these requests where we basically patch a flawed production. And I don't have to tell you how frustrating it is, how much time it wastes, how much resources it wastes, it's, um, it just clogs up your entire e-discovery workflow because person who is fixing this basically have to stop multitasking and they have to focus on just one job, work on nothing but that, where normally they could be running a couple of uh, you know, processing jobs, maybe doing some kind of export, things could be going at the same time. But when you start doing this suffixing and fixing, the person who can do multitasking becomes basically a single task person and they have to put their full focus into repairing that production. So what do I propose? When I was working at one of the e-discovery vendors, we would often get this letter saying, hey, 
these documents were produced to you. Bates numbers, you know, 5,000 to 5,962. You know, Consider them non-existent. Delete any record of those Bates numbers and consider them uh, skipped Bates number range. So why they do that? Why they did that is because they would just take the documents that needed to be reproduced and they assigned the next sequential Bates number and they just redid that production. And I think this solves all the problems we're talking about. You know, if you need to have more pages, less pages, you need to uh, replace document that had multiple images with just one placeholder, you can do all that. Just pick up from the next Bates number and continue numbering forward, even though you're numbering the same documents. And then send a letter saying these Bates numbers no longer valid. Anything you received in this range isn't a valid document. It should be deleted from your system. And that solves all the problems we've been talking about. I know what you're thinking. What if they already started reviewing and tagging documents? What then? We want the numbers to match. Well, no, you don't. All you have to do is provide the cross-reference file of the old starting number and the new starting number. And that is going to be so much easier to transfer coding from the old number to new number than it is to work with the documents and suffix and prefix and put in slip sheets and do all that stupidity. All you have to do is just say, these documents being thrown out, here are the new documents. Uh, these are the old numbers, here's how they correlate to the new numbers. These are the back docs, here are the new back docs. That's it. If you have coding that you applied with old numbers, export it out, uh, use the cross-reference, reload it for new documents, and you're done. We solved all these problems of reproducing images. I honestly don't understand why people are not comfortable with this approach. They would rather have their techs or the vendor spend hours and hours working and doing something absolutely ridiculous, spend tons of money on it, as opposed to just saying to somebody, look, here's the Bates range, throw it out. Here's the new Bates range, done. But for some reason, people are not comfortable with this and I don't really understand why. So please let me know what do you think is wrong with solution I'm proposing and how we can get more clients to agree to follow this process. That's really all I got to say. I'm hoping this is something we can start doing uh, much more and that'll make everyone's job easier. All right, as usual, don't forget to follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube, and I will see you on the video.